the dotted line. Let Philadelphia freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. Praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I Here are some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. Now that Lord Cornwallis has joined Benedict Arnold, I am not even strong enough to get beaten. Gentlemen, our fleet has finally arrived nearby at Chesapeake Bay. It will carry our troops to a position from which we will crush the rebels once and for all. We must have information. What about your spy, McKee? The one who helped you almost capture Arnold? This slave could make defeating the rebels significantly easier. I have always thought that one person of ability may accomplish great things for the world if he first forms a solid plan. And then passionately devotes himself to following it through. Is it James? Master, do you believe in freedom? You know I do. I'm a patriot. I believe in this new country. General Lafayette left here only yesterday. I would like your permission to join him. Then I'll come back if I survive. Hmm. All right, James. You may offer your services to the general. Thank you, sir. I'm much obliged. Without a navy, we can do nothing decisive. With it, everything honorable and glorious. General Washington, when do you think the French fleet will get here? I expect General Rochambeau knows when Admiral de Grasse will grace us with his company, but our good ally is not saved. If the ships would arrive, we could take New York and end this war. The French haven't even come through with support for Lafayette, one of their own. Yes, General Knox. The poor Marquis races through the Virginia heat with barely 1,200 hungry men, trying to stop that traitor from burning more homes to the ground. Benedict Arnold. Pillaging my state. If only Lafayette could capture that traitor. I want the traitor. I want Arnold alive to face the justice he deserves. I would like to face General Arnold too to ask him if he no longer believes all his lofty words about freedom. But we are powerless, running like rabbits from place to place. Where are our French troops? Our ships? Ships? Ships sail on water. Water is cold. Please don't mention cold, Jobert. It reminds me how hot I am. Write this to Washington, please. Your Excellency. Now that Lord Cornwallis has joined Benedict Arnold here in Virginia, I am not even strong enough to get beaten. Ah. I must find other means with which to fight. I remain supremely confident of our ultimate victory. But, sir, I am running out of men, supplies, and ideas. <laughs> Henri, you're in the presence of a general and a lady. Get dressed. <gasps> General, there's a Negro here who wishes to join us. Bring him in. Who are you, my friend? James, sir. What is your last name, James? My master's name is Amistad, so that is my name, too. How do you think you can serve our cause, James Amistad? What are your skills? 
Sir, I am invisible. Huh? I'm a black man. Most white folk don't look at me. They don't think about me. They don't care about me. They don't fear me. Do you have any use for an invisible man? This horrible southern heat. If General Clinton had heeded my advice and permitted me to crush Washington in the north, His Excellency would be a prisoner, and I wouldn't be in Virginia sweating like some beast of burden. General Arnold, sir, you ordered me to bring you any Negroes offering service? Ah, yes, in return for their freedom. They value freedom above all else. That is why Negroes can be relied on. Bring them in. How long have you lived in this area? All my life, sir. You know your way around, even in the dark? Yes, sir. You will serve me as my guide. First, clean my coat. And I do hope you have a talent for killing mosquitoes. Lieutenant, I shall not wish to be disturbed tonight. Now and then I enjoy being alone with the trees, the crickets, and the frogs. I find it my sole opportunity these days for contentment and calm. If and only if there is a matter of extreme urgency, you will find me by the pond, just outside the northeast end of camp, relaxing. Find the spy in our camp, and you will hang him! So we almost captured Arnold, all because of James Armistead? We, oui, Henri. Perhaps James is the secret weapon we've been lacking. Henri, I told you to put on your clothes. We. Oui. Good morning, sir. Three more desertions last night. It's this heat, Lieutenant. Our troops are from colder climates. I had hoped that seeing me wearing full uniform would inspire them. Joubert, didn't you tell me there used to be warriors who fought naked? You, Henri Lefebvre, are not a warrior. Hmm. Now Clinton calls me North. At least I can meet Washington in his foolish campaign to retake New York. Sir. I'd like to continue to serve, sir. Please don't send me back to slavery. General Cornwallis has arrived here in Petersburg. His lordship can always use another servant. The man doesn't even like to buckle his own shoes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'm much obliged. An ambush! Captain Wayne, we wouldn't have lost any of your brave men at James River if we had intelligence of Cornwallis's plans. Thanks for the lightweight uniform, sir. You are welcome. And now these rumors Cornwallis will be moving, but where, when? Must have sent you back a lot of money, sir. It was my pleasure. Worth every penny to get you into something other than your underwear. We must have information. What about your spy, McKee? The one who helped you almost capture Arnold? 
We have not heard from James Armistead in two months. It is my hope he has not been able to get a message out. It is my fear that he is dead or has run away. I ask the spies, sir, do you have any last words? Yes, sir, he answered. But if I told them to you, they wouldn't be mine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> More pie. Ooh. Mm. Now I shall tell you my news, which is not to travel outside this tent. Gentlemen, our fleet has finally arrived nearby at Chesapeake Bay. It will carry our troops to a position from which we will crush the rebels once and for all. We do not yet have orders as to where that position will be. Thank you, gentlemen, and good night. What's your name? James, sir. James, I wish to have a word with you about something quite grave. Yes, sir? I wish to talk to you about spying. Lafayette had me write a letter to Washington for him. He told His Excellency he's devilish afraid of General Cornwallis. He's just trying to get Washington to send help. Joe Bear's not afraid of anything. Who's that? James Armistead! James! James? Sir, General Cornwallis knows I am a spy. Then how is it, James, that you are still alive? I am a spy for General Cornwallis. Cornwallis thinks you are working for him? James, you are brilliant! <laughs> Cornwallis is expecting General Clinton to send some of the British fleet to the Chesapeake Bay with troops and supplies. But where will these ships take the British troops, mon ami? If Cornwallis knows, he is insane and he's careful with his maps and papers. But I'll find out, sir. I swear I'll find out. You be careful, James. Now that Lord Cornwallis thinks you are spying for the British, you are in more danger than ever. It's only fair that I give you a chance to change your mind and never again return to the English camp. No one will think any less of you, my brave friend. I'll need some phony papers to give Cornwallis. You shall have them. But not quite yet. And now that we have finally received the orders containing our army's real destination, you, James, shall take these orders to Lafayette with a false destination to lead him astray. Tell him you took them for my pocket when I was drunk. Yes, sir. You shall have your freedom and more. You Negroes take care of me, and I shall take care of you. James, is tea ready? Another minute, sir. Then, Lieutenant, let us enjoy 60 seconds of fresh Virginia air. This slave could make defeating the rebels significantly easier. Ah. 
It's lovely outside. Now, Lieutenant, we must use this particular spy very carefully. Don't you feel like taking some air, too? I'll watch things here. I'd ever eaten. <clears throat> I can only imagine the astonishment on my face. I, I know you'd be rewarded, but delicacy in front of this Please don't say anything. Please. I desperately wish I'd demanded the recipe from the man, but I was so surprised. I simply didn't think of it. I hope, Lieutenant, that our forces do not similarly squander such a splendid opportunity. Excellent. Cornwallis will move to near Yorktown here, where he'll wait for the British fleet to arrive in Chesapeake Bay. When his ships arrive, he will attack us. Washington must know of this immediately. James? How did you learn this? I was very nearly caught, General. I would have been put to death for treason if not for an African soldier fighting for the British. A man named Cato. Cato? Isn't that the name of Moses' brother? Yes, certainement! Cato! We must find out if it is Moses' brother. James, please don't put yourself at any more risk. But if it's possible to find out, it would mean so much to both of them. I owe the man at least that. General Rochambeau lied to me. Our French fleet is headed for Chesapeake Bay in Virginia, not for New York as Rochambeau promised. My plan to take New York is ruined, but... This might provide us with the opportunity we've been waiting for. We know Cornwallis is at Chesapeake Bay, sir. Yes, General Knox, at Yorktown. Admiral de Grasse will have 29 warships and 3,000 troops here. Our army and Rochambeau could march south and join Lafayette on the other side of Yorktown, here. We would then be surrounding the British by land and by sea. So the army marches south, it could be the huge victory we've been hoping for. Yes, James, it would certainly lead to a great victory or a devastating defeat. Hmm. The risk would indeed be grave. What if the march to Virginia in the heat decimates our troops? What if the French ships never reach Chesapeake Bay and leave us without naval support? What if we arrive here and the British fleet evacuates Cornwallis's forces? And worst of all, what if Cornwallis leaves before we even arrive in Virginia? News of very great importance is on the way. In the meantime, my dear Marquis, it is of the most critical importance that, at all costs, you prevent Cornwallis from leaving Yorktown. How can we hold Lord Cornwallis in Yorktown with so few men? Sarah, please write back to His Excellency. I hope you will find we have taken the best precautions to lessen His Lordship's chances of escape. Yes, sir. <laughs> Is there any more, whatever this is?
These plans you recovered were clearly intended for a large new rebel force on its way here. To reinforce Lafayette. Fine work, James. So we shall indeed remain here at Yorktown until our fleet arrives. I want you to gather my senior officers back here in 20 minutes. <clears throat> Cato, what? Do you have kin named Moses? Moses? My brother! James, what do you think about during your long walks between our camp and Yorktown? The petition of James, a slave belonging to William Armistead, that your petitioner, convinced of the just right which all mankind have to freedom, even though he was a slave, did during the ravages of Lord Cornwallis through the state of Virginia, enter into the service of the Marquis Lafayette, that he often, at the peril of his life, conveyed messages from the Marquis into the enemy lines of the most secret and important kind, the possession of which, if discovered on him, would have certainly endangered his life. That for this duty, he should be set free, and his master paid for the loss of a valuable workman. <laughs> Freedom, Sarah. Freedom. America! Cookie jar! <laughs> <laughs>